I, I really love um, seeing, you know, how you've progressed. I, I know you've gone through some difficult times. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to have you on the show because I saw you were directing and I saw you were producing some really new content. And I've also seen you go through a lot. And I love the story of, you know, women who have hard times and who come back and reclaim their power because that's also my story. You know, I've struggled with alcoholism and relapse and all that stuff. So I've been through that cycle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that redemption and coming back is like so powerful and amazing. And I think it's a great, important story to tell. So do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, all I would, of that? I would love to. Um, so just to give the people listening a little bit of backstory so they know what we're talking about. Um, I believe it was in 2018. No, 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, nope, 2018. <laughs> I had to check the date on my arm. <laughs> um, 2018, I went through a really, really tough year. Um, in the December leading up to that year, I had a really, really bad miscarriage. Mm-hmm. And um, because of that, I was I had to take off work um, unexpectedly um, and was charged a lot of money uh, for canceling shoots and was put into a really, really bad financial situation. Um, I was able to get out of it at the beginning of 2018 and kind of come back to shooting, uh, but I was still really depressed from what had happened to me. And at the time I was 22, 21-ish. And so I had never been pregnant before. I'd never gone through a pregnancy or anything. And so dealing with losing it and like how traumatic it was, it was like one of the worst experiences I had ever gone through. Um, Dealing with how traumatic it was afterwards was just really hard for me uh, at 21. And on top of that, like my agency was putting a lot of pressure on me to just Mm -hmm. continue to perform at the level that I was performing at, which was at the time I was shooting maybe 20, 15 times a month. And it's a lot. It's a lot um, for any performer, yeah. um, for any human being. I mean, being on set that much, you barely have any time to your to yourself. You know, um, basically what I was doing at the time is I was just going to set, coming home and just like smoking until I basically knocked out just so that I could wake up the next morning, go to set, shoot, come back home, smoke until I pass out. And then it was just the same cycle over and over and over again. I wasn't really dealing with. um, Yeah, you weren't able to process the trauma. I was just putting, pushing it to the side, pushing it to the side, pushing it to the side because I was just trying to perform, trying to perform, uh, keep to the level that I was at uh, before all this had happened. Um, And then also just having a public eye on you during all of that having to pretend like you're okay all the time, it, it just, it sucks. Like, yeah. it, you already feel like you have to act because you're being called a name that you're not. You're already having to feel like you're having to act around all these different people. And then on top of it, you're having to pretend that you're happy too. And it's just like, it's just a miserable cycle to keep going into. Right. And uh, eventually I just cracked. Um, it was like May of 2018 and I actually was at that time I had started to take Xanax a lot because now the weed wasn't really doing it for me and I was just I was still having to perform and still having to perform so I started taking Xanax and I was like this is great like I don't feel anything Mm -hmm. like but also in the same sense I was a real asshole like I was a real piece of shit to my friends to my family like to the person I was with like I was a very, very bad place. Mm-hmm. And um, it was May when it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I just don't even want to do this anymore because I know I'm letting all these people down. Like mm-hmm. all my friends can't fucking stand me because I have bailed on them. I've lied to them. I've told none of them that I'm going to stop doing this. And I just don't. And, you know, uh, it's now gotten to a point where it's affecting my relationship. I know that I'm. this person's probably going to leave me because of what I'm doing and da-da-da-da-da. And on top of that, I live in California, which is hundreds of thousands of miles away from my family. And I'm completely alone, and I don't have anybody here. And for some reason, I don't know why this is, but for some reason when you go through a miscarriage, it makes you feel really alone for some reason. Or just when you lose a pregnancy, I think, in general. I think it just makes you feel really alone because um, it's hard for anybody to relate. You know, it's hard for anybody to be like, oh, I get what you're going through unless they went through the same thing. Mm-hmm. And even then, it's it's kind of hard to explain because everybody's situation is is different. Right. 
so I was feeling extremely alone and I, I just felt like I couldn't, I didn't really have an option. So I ended up trying to take my life by swallowing a shit ton of Xanax and it didn't end up working at all. And I woke up the next morning, which I wasn't planning on doing. And I actually had a shoot that day. And I was so out of my mind that I actually tried to go to my shoot. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually was, like, packing my my shoot bag. Yeah. And was, like, zipping it up. And my boyfriend at the time was like, no, like, you're insane. Like, you're not going to set. Like, I know what you did last night, blah, 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 blah. And, like, you need to call your agent and, and tell him what happened. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I I told my agent what happened. I was like, I'm an idiot. Like, I fucking, I tried to kill myself last night, da 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 da, all this stuff. And and you tried to charge me a kill fee for the day. The irony (laughs) of the name. (laughs) No shit, right? I'm like, I wish. No, I was kidding. Anyways, um, so (laughs) that's besides the point. So I tell him, and he basically told me, um, I'm going to have to take you off the site. And mm-hmm. until you get your mental health back up to a state where you can perform again, I'm not going to put you back up on the site. Now, however, with these lovely porn contracts, you're not allowed to shoot or do anything, anything, work right. for anyone um, right. unless it's through your agent. Right. And he was basically saying that I was off the website. So that meant for the next you three, weren't working three months, I wasn't going to be working. Right. Luckily, at the time, I only had probably two, three months on my contract. So it was really easy for me to... Uh, just kind of like sit and wait it out mm-hmm. versus, you know, some people have two, three years sitting mm-hmm. on their contracts still. Uh, so I, I took a break from porn and I, I took a step back and I took three months off to really just kind of regather myself and take time to heal what I wasn't healing uh, prior mm-hmm. to that. And it was hard. I'm not going to deny that I I went through a lot even just in those three months following it because it was really hard because everything came out publicly. Then it became the, a social media thing. And uh, a lot of my girlfriends told me that I should, you know, go out against Derek. And then I ended up doing that. And then it became like a whole entire media circus. And then it became just constantly my accounts getting taken down by this team of people that were trying to make sure that all of these things weren't being said and da 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 da. And so it was a really stressful three months. And I, I didn't really do a lot of healing because mm-hmm. of how stressful it was. And I just kind of threw myself back into porn after three months. Um, and uh, once I got back in, um, I just kind of went back to my old ways Mm -hmm. of just like, I'm just going to put this stuff to the side and like, I'm just going to hunker down and work and focus and focus. And uh, that went on for like, I would probably say six months. And it really wasn't until 2019, like beginning of 2019, that I really started to get my shit together again after my suicide attempt. Uh, I was back to performing and I was back to shooting, but I was so skinny. I was like maybe a hundred pounds when I was shooting, wow. and like you can tell in the pictures, like my. How much do you weigh now? I weigh one twenty now. Oh wow! Like one twenty. I can't imagine you losing twenty pounds. I know, and wow. so like it was like my face was sunken in. Like you could see my rib bone. Like I was just, I looked really, really unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the worst part is, is that when you start to get skinny in, I think any modeling industry, it sucks that people will say positive things about it. <laughs> oh my God, I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. I, it really sucks because in, then in your brain, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, and yeah. so I genuinely really thought I was okay because everybody was telling me I looked great. They're like, your abs look great. Like, mm-hmm. But you could see my abs because I was starving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, I really thought I was okay. And then it wasn't until like beginning of 2019 that um, I went home by myself and I had a conversation with my dad and he was just like, you don't look like yourself. He's like, I know you and like, this isn't you. And like, you just, you just don't look like yourself anymore. And I was like, I know. I was like, I don't really feel like it. Like I feel, I feel sad. Like, and he's like, you need to start changing things. He's like, you need to figure out what you want to do in this industry, like what you want in your life, who you want to be a part of it, who you want to be surrounding it with. And like, he's like, you really need to take that into consideration. He's like, cause that's why you're feeling the way you feel. And then when I got back to LA, I, I made a lot of changes. Like I, I really tried to, to fix a lot of things around me. And, um, 
I I got out of the environment that I was in. I was able to kind of stand back up on my feet by myself. And uh, even though like in that process, I had to go through like a bad breakup and like losing some friends and, you know, some tough shit in the long run, it, it pushed me to do so much better because then it helped me pursue what I really wanted to be doing, which was directing and shooting my own content mm-hmm. and creating stuff that's really beautiful. Um, and so I started to focus my energy on that and just creating really beautiful stuff and uh, stuff that I was proud of that made me feel fulfilled to be in the industry. Right. And I think doing that and changing it from just kind of like a means to an end to something that I'm more passionate about is was really my biggest turning point in my mental health for yeah. me. Um, and just the people I was around as well. That was that was a huge, huge factor. Yeah, absolutely. There's, um, I was reading uh, something about what makes human beings happy, and it's it's not money. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> shocker. Um, but one of the the greatest things that that make people happy is um, a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. And a, a sense of having a place in the world and that you matter yep. and that you're creating things that matter or you're doing things that matter. And that sounds to me like that's what you found. Mm-hmm. And it's been uh, doing this has also given me a newfound appreciation for the industry and just everybody that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like before, I, I kind of s- saw it in more of a negative light, whereas now it's kind of changed my perspective to a more positive one. Do you think it's because you feel like you have more power now, more like agency over your career? Like what? That's definitely helped. Definitely having more power over like my brand and my agency has helped. Um, I definitely feel like being able to navigate my own ship has definitely changed my perspective major Mm because leaving my agency after that, that was kind of the first step to me really healing. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think for the two years that I was in the industry initially, I there was a lot of shit that like, I just was putting off to the side and yeah. was kind of like running away from, including my, my hometown and shit back home. And so I think once I was on my own and really was handling myself is when I kind of finally was able to deal with all of that mm-hmm. and instead of pretending to just be Adria Ray, I was able to finally be myself, which then made Adria Ray better because mm-hmm. then Adria Ray became more authentic and not just this random person that I was just trying to make, like, okay, yeah, whatever, porn star. It's Now it's something more. It's I want to be a, a woman in the industry that other girls can look at and be like, you know, hey, she went through shit, but she came out and she's doing better and now she's actually doing stuff for the industry and just because I'm a performer or just because I'm this or that doesn't mean that I can't do the same. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the greatest gifts of dealing with personal tragedies like that is knowing that you can come through it and knowing that your experience can help other people. Mm -hmm. That was, for me, like when I was going through my relapse and I spent four and a half years trying to get sober and I was like filled with so much self-loathing and hatred and just failure constantly trying to get sober and constantly relapsing and and I was like what you know and I I like to, I truly like to believe that everything happens for a reason but when you're in those really dark moments it's hard to believe that it's really hard but you know what I kept telling myself was like all of this that I'm going through it's just I'm going through it because I need to experience this so that one day when I meet somebody else who's experiencing the same thing I can tell them like it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Like I went through the same thing and you're like, you're going to be fine. You just got to keep trying. So what do you think is like the greatest lesson that you learned from that whole experience? I think my greatest lesson was to really take a look at myself and what I was doing in situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I played the victim a lot. Yeah. That's never going to get you anywhere. I played and the, it's such an easy default. Yep. I, to do. I played the victim a lot when I first got in and uh, just being young, you know, yeah, I think totally. it's I think it's just being young. You you really think everybody's out to get you um, mm-hmm. because your parents aren't there to protect you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, for me, my biggest my biggest growth and all of that was really taking a step back and saying, hey, like what what did I do to make that situation worse? What what was I doing? 
that was really leading me down this path of self-destruction. Mm-hmm. And that's that's exactly what it was, is I was just self-destructing all over yeah. the place. And everybody was telling me it, but I was just being a jerk and was saying that they were being mean to me. Right. And was, you're not being accepting or you're not being understanding. I'm going through a lot and da 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 And it's like, yes, we all go through a lot, but even when we're going through stuff, we still need to be able to take a step back and say, what am I doing? How can I make this better? What steps do I need to take to get myself out of this? And I wasn't doing any of that. I was just, I don't know. I think I was expecting somebody to do it for me or something. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know who. I was like, maybe someone will come along. Yeah, save you, right? (laughs) Yeah, but no one is going to. It's it's only you that's going to do it. Which is why it's so important to take responsibility, personal responsibility for what's going on in your life. Because when you fall into that victim role, first of all, like, you're automatically taking all the power away from yourself because it's almost like you're behaving like you can't, you have no power over what's happening to you in your life. Exactly. And there's definitely situations where people have little to no power. But once you start looking at things from a different perspective and taking personal responsibility, then you can start changing things. Because the thing is, is that sitting around, sitting and waiting around for things to change for you will never happen. Mm -hmm. You cannot control the world. You cannot control the things that happen to you. You cannot control how other people behave. The only thing that any of us have any control over is how we behave Mm -hmm. and how we react to things. So if we take a really hard look at ourselves and look at how our behavior could be perhaps contributing to this situation, then we recognize that you could change that behavior which will change the situation. Mm And I think I really believe in like also manifesting like oh, your for future. Sure. And also too, what you said earlier about, you know, changing the people that you were around, that is also it. Because I think that when you change your behavior and you start to manifest a life that you want, you start to behave in a way that you wish other people behaved, then you attract different people to you and in your life. Yep. And I think also different opportunities because people want to work, you know, productive people, Um, good people want to work with other productive good people. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be around negative victim playing people. Exactly. So when you change your behavior, you change the world around you simply because the people... how you're navigating now. Exactly. And the Mm -hmm. people and opportunities that are attracted to you shift. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that. And uh, it, it definitely took a lot for me to kind of like come out of that daze. Um, and uh, I, I, I think the biggest thing for me is that um, when you're in that mindset, it, it's so toxic that it starts to take over every part of your life, like you yeah. were saying, and that once you kind of finally start to break out of it, that's when you kind of realize. And then you can also realize the people around you that are also doing it because when you're that way, you attract people that are that way. Mm-hmm. And then totally. you, you kind of start to realize like, oh, oh shit, like – that person does that same shit to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy for me. Like Mm -hmm. I need to, I need to change this. And this year has also been a really big year for me of trying to mend relationships with people that I've affected with behaving that way Mm -hmm. that I did while I was in that kind of toxic state. And that for me has been one of the most rewarding things about this is just being able to uh, come to like a common ground with people that, I thought in my head that I had really ruined a lot of relationships with, but understanding that people are a lot more forgiving than you think they are. And Mm -hmm. if you're just upfront and honest and take responsibility for the shit that you did, like people are very receptive. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) They're very receptive. Yeah. And uh, this year for me has been the most rewarding in that sense that I've been able to um, build a lot of relationships with people that I thought that I probably would have never had. Yeah. Well, I think the people who truly love and care about you, they want to see you doing well. Oh, yeah. They want to see you improve. And I think that, you know, people can recognize we all go through like hard times like that. And I think that most people have had those experiences. And I think that if you can come out on the other side, like a wiser person Mm -hmm. um, who has truly changed and, you know, really wants to mend relationships, then 
people want to welcome you back in. I think in general, like we want to see other people do well. Mm -hmm. If we are ourselves like in a healthy mindset, you know of what course. I mean? Like we like to see other people do well. Mm -hmm. And again, let's say I said, like I wanted to have you on this show because I saw that, you know, I don't know you terribly well, mm -hmm. but I saw that kind of transition. And I was like, this is a great like redemption story that I love to tell because I think it gives so much hope and inspiration to other people. So um, I'm just really happy to hear all of that. Aww. That really moves me. This has been really, this has been really nice. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I always knew you were a smart girl, but like it's, it's your, yeah, you're very wise. Thank you. Like, I appreciate your that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.